good work. Okay. We are officially um, recording the meeting now. So. <laughs> Uh, hi, Samantha. It, I'm Barb Oland, and I'm a secretary. And how do you spell your last name? Mine, it's uh, Sharf. It's S as in Sam, H as in Harry, A R F F as in Frank. And I get that question all the time. I get variations on it all the time. So if you don't get it right the first time, there's no hard feelings. <laughs> um, so my name is Barb Oland. I've lived here since 1984, actually, so way longer than I lived anywhere else. And I recently retired, but I'm um, I'm involved in the Kevin Garden Club pretty heavily. I'm the incoming civic chair, which means I'm now in charge of doing all the plants, planting some stuff around town. Although someone planted everything that's there now, last year, early in the season, I took over in June. So going forward, I'm in charge of that. And um, and I helped Dave and I helped Dave and some Camden Garden Club people. We did a lot of revamping of, of plants on the public landing. You might have noticed or not. And uh, I don't have any degree in environmental stuff. I was history major, also at UMass Amherst, actually. But um, I'm just environmentally yeah, okay. involved because that's what I care about. So I'm glad you're around and here. Thank you. So, There's a smell through there. Is Mia here? Yeah, oh, that's who's, who's on Zoom? That's the oh, that's Sam Sharp. Yeah, well, sure no, but I thought they're okay. Otherwise, sure. I, I'm Beatty Parker. I live up the road and I've done environmental work for a long time. I was on Cancer Conservation Commission 50 years ago when it was very new, uh, tree promoting, uh, watching toxics in the state, uh, local food with, with Mafka for a long time as a volunteer. And, the, and, and we just had the, the fair, and I started to pray the fair. <laughs> That's my claim to fame. <laughs> Am I next? You are. We're okay. Yeah, Pamela hasn't arrived, but she will. So we'll let her say hi when she does. And um, we have other committee uh, members or participants who have other obligations today. So that we're... Sure. A skeletal crew, if you will. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So, hi. Um, thank you for introducing yourselves to me. I appreciate that. Um, I'm Sam Sharf. So different Sam. <laughs> um. Uh. And I work for. Well, I live in Camden, obviously, and I work for the Bloomberg Center for Public Innovation uh, at Johns Hopkins, which is a real mouthful. Um. And we're sort of focused on public innovation for government leaders. Um, I'm specifically on a team that handles um, that handles websites and and a few other technical pieces. Um, I also do a lot of writing um, in that in my position. But um, basically, I'm I'm interested in any sort of public service, any sort of public infrastructure, especially on the local level. So I don't have a green thumb. <laughs> I don't have um, a degree in environmental environmental sustainability either, but I'm interested and um, happy to help and, and to be here, I certainly care. And I, let me see, I moved to Maine I live here with my husband and daughter, and we moved to, to the Camden area in 2017, um, but I lived in um, the Kennebunk, Kennebunkport, Cape Porpoise Port, area from age nine to 18. So I think I'm not technically a Mainer according to like old Mainer standards, but um, <laughs> I, I certainly consider myself a Mainer. Um, I'm trying to think uh, if, I, if I've missed anything. Oh, I also lived in Northampton, which I know is in Amherst, but I have a little bit of a connection to that area and also Vermont as well. So um, definitely some like regional uh, overlap there. Um, so thank you for hosting me today. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so have the committee members had the opportunity to um, review the minutes from the um Previous, oh, I put her in 27, shame on me. I supposed to be nine. 
<laughs> earlier this month. Yeah, I'm September sorry. 6th. I'm sorry they were fairly brief. I normally take notes during the meeting and then I refer back to the to the um YouTube and fill in things like yeah, yeah. But there was no YouTube, so I was like gone completely by wow. memory. And I was like, like was it wow. the Audrey's talk to the rotary? Was it was the Penn Bay Rotary or was it the you know, West Bay Rotary, or was the I, I they just like couldn't remember. Yeah, I'm sorry. I just had a, such a busy month. I'm, I'm sorry. It's not I apologize. A problem. I actually would. I actually like to table the approval of the minutes to review and insert. Yeah. The, you know, because I think sure. having Audra add a couple of key that would pieces, be really great, right? You right. know, and I think she has a link to that particular or an access that was, to that that um, PowerPoint she shared with us. So. Um, I think that might be uh, in work, just kind of pushing out the final approval to next month's meeting. Totally agree. And, okay. and, you know, Samantha Mortlock is really good about picking up little details. She's like, she like well, fail safe. So, and she's not obviously not available right now, but yeah. Um, so, I think that'd be fantastic. Okay. And then it'll give me time to tweak my, um, in the, my wrong date on the. <laughs> <laughs> this month's agenda. <laughs> so, all right. So, we all agree then. Um, is, is, is everybody in agreement on the postponement of the approval of the 9 6 2023 minute to yes. October? Okay. Awesome. Um, well, we do not have a select board liaison to update us with any um, information. Um, as to what is going on, uh, Allison is normally our select board liaison. She is at a coastal resiliency um, meeting conference today, some nature. So she's um, she's doing the work, but she's <laughs> doing it elsewhere. <laughs> so um, so I think we'll just kind of keep the keep it moving. Um, Ironically, we don't have um, David here either, unless that's him coming in. Um, so we're kind of short on a public works update, unless, Brian, you have any additional data entry or um, work with the tree survey or any of that. I don't. So we have the, those are usually the really long reports. <laughs> right. I know you're getting like this. You're going to be like, these meetings are so efficient and it's great. Uh, well, <laughs> maybe not quite. No. <laughs> no, I don't. Okay. All right. So, um, I mean, I ran into Dave casually a couple of weeks ago when we talked about the Camden Street Tree Program. Uh, but it was basically, um, BD and I had spoken and, um, He's aware. He's basically he's basically uh, tapped up, right? He's yeah. got his, but he did say that if there was somebody that really, really wanted a tree, he could probably figure out a way to squeeze it in. So yeah, but um, you had know, he, had he mentioned he was he had enough people interested to get the trees to to plant out the rest of the trees. Like there was no right. location problem. It was just that's correct, kind of squeezing in the rest of it. But he had gotten probably more than fifty percent of the trees. In the ground already is he just put three up Washington Street above me. They're they're a little iffy, but they're they probably will make do fine. Great. So um so any so that sounds good and um yeah and then we'll just keep keep the the ball rolling yep. for, um 2024 and and um and some outreach. I think we talked um previously about doing a piece for the paper um and or having something kind of in print just like an eight and a half eleven are you interested in the street tree but well, you know you could fill out the form and leave it at the town office something um so i think those would be good kind of winter plan for right. 2024 and future um to have and then it'd be something that we could print and have at outreach tables for little events and programs absolutely going on. So, right okay um the Magenta Cook River water quality um, has any did anybody uh, view or attend their monthly meeting this past uh, month? They always have a um, outreach event or a you know an educational piece about 
something to do with the river. I did not attend this this last one, but I will say that Audra's um, conversation with us and the opportunity last earlier this month um, really made me um, pretty jazzed and pretty uh, excited about the possibility of collaborating with that particular group. Um, I reached out and shared that um, Brian and I have a pretty strong data set of invasive terrestrial plants that are on all the public properties, including all the properties along the river, um, the public parking area, the little river walk, and Channery Park. Channery Park. Yep. Um, have all been, as well as um, Seabright Dam. Seabright, you and I did. Uh, yep. Yep. So they have a pretty good um, um, body of. Um, you know, uh, with conservation, you know, with a particular conservation concern, and that if we could integrate that and overlap that with uh, some some of the work that they want to do for a grant going forward, that that would be a nice partnership um, between the two. Yeah, groups. and you, you, uh, I saw you email Audra with uh, informa yes. some information. Yeah. Right. Yep. 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 I, I, yeah, I, I should mention I'm not on this committee. I'm an mm -hmm. observer. <laughs> Um, I would worry about both River Walk and Tannery people being upset if you don't, don't talk about it first. Because at least the river, the River Walk, was planted probably incorrectly. But I don't know what you're seeing as invasives there. Just in case you run into something, people are fond of. Yeah, uh, so I it's don't think you would be funded too much of it. There's not okay. a, I, I trust all the I, I, I mean, trust it's it. really nasty. I just, yeah, I'm just, yeah. There's, there's, there's trees in there, Norway maples, that have to be 40, 50 years old. Oh, yeah. So this, it, it's a long standing tradition of yeah. invasive. Yeah. <laughs> just stuff. when you take one out, yeah. there's a big space. Oh yeah. Oh no, there there is no there's no yeah, there's... solid plan to take anything out. It's more right. a sharing that we have this data set and um as they look at the building their own data set of the water quality and of the of the potential for an impoundment to be removed and which one would be a priority and which one would not, you know, like all of the information that they're gathering in this particular space and time. And all the education hours are doing that. Some of the work that we're doing with with um, Dave, with the you know the street tree plantings, even in, are incorporated because it's all about climate resiliency and all about adding to cool, river cooling. And so that you know, um, there's a lot of ways that we could collaborate on on the implementation phase and then share. Yeah, so the river cooling sense. would be a good thing. Yeah, yeah. You want, right. yeah, yeah. So we replace. Any any work in the future to remove um, invasive plants on the said town properties would be to have with the encouragement of native or native okay. friendly species right. to make sure that the water quality is stayed intact, the embankments, the buffers were in place, etc. So yeah, but that it was an integrated part because you can't remove an impoundment or you can't do any kinds of improvements without knowing that you're going to have that interface with the right. plant everywhere. There's like not a single space in that two mile stretch that's not going to, you know, have a flush of, okay. you have to remove in place spaces, you're going to have to replace with something and you're still going to have all that seed bank that emerges. So that's what I was just saying, yeah. you're going to be able to share share that data sure. and make sure that they don't duplicate it because it's it was mentioned in a report already by the okay. the team so that that already and they stop that one. this area we're talking about it's considered just other minutes uh it, what i mean i know what we're talking about but but what do you call that uh when dams come down it's called the Sure. In case of our, no. When we when you remove the dams, when you remove the dams and where they were and the impoundments. Yeah, impoundments. I'm sorry, I couldn't remember the word. That's okay. That's absolutely fine. There's a lot of jargon and a lot of different like I just I have to yes, get the get the language as close to correct as possible. There. Um yeah, so I saw that 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 conversation with 
with water quality and where we're flushing, you know, where the culverts need to be changed and just the flow and just these sort of interfaces. Um, it was a, it was a good opportunity to share some data that we've already been gathering and and uh, possibility for sort of partnership for implementation projects in the hopefully not too distant future. <laughs> Um, and there's certainly money for it out there right now. The, the coastal resiliency, climate resiliency, right. water quality, you know, there's a lot of uh, funding tools that, that would overlap and we could really, really actualize some, some work on the ground. So um, my hope, um, as Brian says, he's kind of a boots on the ground person. I'm, I'm kind of of that vein myself. I, um, I like to talk, but I like to like, see the results so I'm like definitely talking while I'm working kind of <laughs> so so that's what I'd like to see happen going forward I see that as a good partnership um, anything else from the water quality or river work um, that you've seen happening I anything wanna, you've heard I want to ask a question at the end that has to do with that but I'll just wait um, well, I'm the, I'm ending the river well, water quality. I, I this is sort of more for future work. Yeah. Are you considering doing the more stringent shoreline protection thing for the town? Like when somebody clears along the river, it's going to be put back, or along the lake there are grandfathered spots with just grass, you know, with stuff running in. It has been years, 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 years. Vegetated buffers to yes. increase. Yeah. Okay. So, um, just for clarification for everybody here and and anybody who would listen in later. Um, so we have the the state and federal. We have the um, Natural Resources Protection Act, and it requires a certain vegetated buffer. Um, and there's some plants are allowed to be removed and then but then have to be replaced some plants can be managed etc cetera, etc cetera. so what BD is suggesting is that um, to improve water quality that that's a baseline requirement that's that's federally and state mandated what towns can do is um, add a layer an additional layer of protection you can't take away the state or the federal but you can add an additional layer of protection through town ordinance um, and or um, there's other mechanisms, but through town, but through town bylaws, mm -hmm. in order so that we could say um, you could expand the buffer, you know, by ten feet, twenty feet. You could require um, any kind of any projects to be, um, you know, more, you know, more um, stringent than what the the NERPA permits or the NERPA um, laws are. So um, that is something we discussed sort of briefly through the course of the last year, year and a half in, in general, um, but hadn't, hasn't been become an official sort of do we project. not Do we not enforce? Because that's what I'm seeing. Do we, do we, well, we are, not, the, the Conservation Commission doesn't. No, no, does anybody <laughs> not enforce what, what, the, what the federal and state so the code enforcement officer for each town would be responsible for enforcing the Wetlands Protection Act uh, for any project. Well, I guess I should find out what we already have because yeah. we don't enforce it if we do have a requirement. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, so that's certainly um, a conversation to be had when we're having larger water quality conversations because it certainly um, complements any of the other work that we're doing and, um, you know, and would, would add value to sort of replacing shoreline buffer, et cetera. Um, it, yeah, it hasn't been like top priority. We're trying to work with the street trees. We're trying to work with the storm water. Right. We're trying to I'm not talking these. about this group. I'm talking about just decades. In, just in decades. general. Okay. Well, well, I'm sure Allison would have some perspective on that. Yeah, I'm going to ask her. I can yeah. get her attention. Yeah. I think maybe the thing to do is um, yeah. even Barb, just let me, um, if you put it in the minutes, that um, Rebecca will pull up the, the, the town ordinance and highlight the areas. Um, you know, let's see what we have on record and like discuss it at next month's meeting and then yeah. see what might make sense to integrate um, or to look at going forward. 
Do you have specific examples, BD, where you've seen? Unfortunately, that? our selectman, um, chair of the select board, who's been sounding really great environmentally, he took a lot of stuff out um, up the McGonagall River, and it's just grass with a few trees. Yeah. Um, and then there's a place opposite Shirt Tail, looks like trees were either taken down or fell down. And there's quite a lot of vegetation, but I wouldn't call it a buffer. And then there's places on um, we're going to be yeah. late by Barrett's Cove, and there's just been grass with a big house for years and years and years. Osmer Pond may have some. Yeah. Um, well, and again, we could look at uh, possible, you know, the, the ordinance end, but we could also look at the potential projects. I mean, I see well, Barrett Cove is, has a there's huge another place, opportunity which to use some right some before the buffer planting. Right before yeah. the river the place is an invasive mess. <laughs> yeah. That's right nice. before the river walk, there's a nice grassy house that doesn't have anything except maybe some boards. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, oh, there's a lot of places. Actually. There's a lot of places. Yeah. No, there's a lot of uh, buffer improvements that could be made in general. So um, we could help people. Yeah. Yep. So um, yeah, we could let's put that on the agenda and just let's look and see what we actually have. That might that we may just not recognize because it's you know, not certainly not made for us. I'm not really going to wait not stepping. And let's see how we might be able to help encourage. Um, so we're going to take a pause here and say hi to Pamela, and then let you briefly introduce yourself to Sam, who oh. has joined us. Uh, Sam Stark. Hi, um, Sam. So just hi. <laughs> Y'all are. Yeah, I'm Pamela Gleason. And, and I'm um, a member of the conservation community. <laughs> <laughs> nice to meet you. Hi, I, I'm a landscape architect, uh, career-wise, just semi-retired at this point, but um, yeah. Excellent. Designer of plants, very interested, of course, in native plants, pollinators, trees. Part of that part, very important to me. So, yeah. Oh, I'm not very good at being put on the spot. Yeah, so, I that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> low stakes, low stakes. <laughs> Ask me anything. Pam uh, planted um, a native garden across from Hannaford's parking lot where you exit. It's, um, the yeah. start of one. The start of Around one. the sign. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's going to be, I'd like to see it expanded. expanded. Yeah. Um, it used to be complete weeds, and now it's some weeds and it's a meeting plant. So right, it's, it's right. beginning. Yeah, I have but a plan. Um, it's there's a sign that says "Welcome to Camden." That's right across the street from the Hannaford parking yes. lot. And um, when they put in the sidewalks, Dave, uh, Dave and his crew moved the sign back a little bit and put a granite. Um, they raised it with granite blocks, um, and. Yeah, it's very small. I put in a whole bunch of native plants, um, but it's uh, it's it, it, they were small. They were plugs. Some of them haven't even bloomed this year, so it hasn't made a huge impact. And um, my thought was, I actually brought my plan to is to plant the. There's weeds in front of it. There's weeds behind it. You it know. competes with the stuff. Man. It doesn't compete with it. It's supposed to. <laughs> when, when you come out of the parking lot, there's that big light. Oh, you look that, at looking and you at it that way. There, because sure. you're like yeah, looking yeah. at the light. You're looking yeah. at the light instead, right? Right, right. So, so I think if that whole area was planted up, hmm. um, I've talked to Rebecca about that, you know, and just just doing big swaths of you know native, colorful native plants and big stuff. It, it would be a little bit more attractive, right? Um, and really catch people's eye. So, yeah. I'll keep my eye out the next time I'm there. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a beginning. It's a beginning. It's a start. Yeah. Right. Um, so, um, Sam, uh, the other Sam, did not have anything to report from the Camden Rockport uh, Sustainability School Sustainability Committee. It's uh, kind of a, 
I don't want to say it's an ad hoc group. It's kind of formalized, but it's a, it meets informally, like maybe every couple of months or so. Yeah, I, I checked that it's, out, right? Um, it seems. I, I, I think it may have sort of through COVID or, or whatever, it may have kept, sort of lost its way a little bit. Or mm. They had a real few gung-ho projects. I think the latest one was getting that electric um, school bus and it may, they may have, I'm just speculating, but it seemed like there was a little steam had run out and they were kind mm -hmm. of regrouping or, re, you know, I mean, it's one more thing for teachers and parents and, you know, at, you know, others. So I just, it just hasn't been as active in this last year, but that doesn't mean that there's not stuff verbaling behind the scenes. So we won't hear more from them going forward. But Samantha, Samantha, Samantha Mortlock is on it. So, um, I mean, so she said there was nothing new to report there. So um, um, did you say that they were responsible for the electric bus? Well, yeah. I thought that that group was Samantha herself of was it. the other she was the Yeah, she was. She was the real, like, real driving force behind yeah. it. But my understanding <laughs> is there was the group behind that that was pushing. Yeah. yeah. My daughter yeah. rode that bus last year, so I, I, and I didn't know that. So that's a cool connection. Yeah. Well, like you said, Phoebe, Samantha Mortland was really pushing, but she I really, didn't believe there was a really kind of committee behind it. So. Very cool. Um, yeah. Um, so. Do we have anything? We're going to move on to sort of the Conservation Commission, our actual projects. Um, do we have any more to add or any movement um, in terms of our the Emerald Ash Borer Survey? It's, I think what we should do at this point is set a date to yeah. go out and map yes. using the Street Tree Program, um, the sites that are on this, this, the um, original plan this so that we integrate. We can integrate that. Right. Into so we need to take Luisa's report. Okay. So uh, Samantha, Luisa Crane did this Emerald Ash Borer report, which is excellent body of work. Yep. But it was done in 2017. Yep. And um, Pamela and I have looked it over. I just, maybe everybody else has, but... Yep. One of the things we want to do is to go back and look at that report. In that report, there were identified what are called specimen ash trees, which would be the ones we really want to make sure get saved or don't inadvertently get cut down for some reason that has nothing to do with them on ash borer, right? Right. Of course, there's a limited amount of control we could have over some of these trees, but at least... So what we need to do is to go back out and basically go out and walk around using her report, look at those trees, find them now, put them, we have an ARC GIS database with the street trees in it. I don't know if you're familiar with it, but um, um, in, we need to put them into that, yes. or if they may be already in there, some of them, but we've got to coordinate all that stuff. But it's going to require a team to go out and walk around town, basically. Luis's report is, and the whole town of Camden, it's kind of the village yep. and with us maybe a little bit of peripheral. Yep. So it's not this huge like landmass, but it's a beautiful report. So the the uh, the agenda item there is to, I, I think Pamela and I were talking about doing that, right? Yeah. And, and, and Samantha expressed some interest. The yeah, other Samantha. It, it's a tiny work. I would love to join. Yeah, good. I'm going to be gone a lot. This How about Saturday? Saturday? I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> Trying to be you think her you think her family would be uh, upset if she left the wedding to do the We could get the whole wedding party out. Yeah, we <laughs> I just want to go look at trees. Dress, sorry. So we need to we need to firm that up, right? Yeah, well, so uh, yeah, um, we we should definitely set a couple dates and I you know I think it would be helpful to with these projects to put a few things on the calendar and yeah. even if it's, one person it's or two to put them on now because a hundred percent do it. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. And, and then, also, then have like put them on the rain date and the second rain date. Yes. Hurricane date. Since whenever we put something on there's like a massive yeah. stuff. Also um at our at our last meeting where we we're talking about also trying to get Louisa and Caitlin from the town. Oh yeah, that's right. Kind of all to just go with us because Caitlin is doing the GIS. Yeah, that's a good point. That, I think that's what, that up. 
Yeah. Yeah. Caitlin, right. Yeah. Um, yeah, no. so that hadn't been, I realized that that needs to be coordinated with them as well, I guess. So she's the assistant assessor mm -hmm. That's that correct. has expertise with the ArcGIS database. So it's kind of like a special project for her too, right? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. So perhaps then. Uh, do you remember anything with Caitlin's last name? I do not. I don't either. Caitlin Thompson. I'm going to see it. Okay. Literally, I don't know. I don't know. Caitlin. Um, and Lisa. Are you yeah. going to let her off for it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I only have a person in. Are you going to let her off for it, Lisa? Oh, this is part of what she can totally do that. Yeah, absolutely. It was the cream. Yeah. Um, I seem to remember Thompson, but I'm not sure. So, so I think honestly, uh, because we have the other two to integrate on uh, the, the action item here is that I have to send out an email <laughs> and to. include them to set a date or two um, to get out there and um, get get moving on mm -hmm. it. Um, I think the first the first one should definitely have them involved. And then after that we can, you know, kind of keep the ball rolling. Yeah. Do you but, want to put anything in the newspaper asking residents to come forth with some of them have enormous ones in their backyard. Do Not yet. Know, let's get let's get a handle on what we've got, what's in the report. Yeah. And honestly, if some of them are on the report, I, you know, well, I'm not shy about it. I like, can I knock on the door and get a, go in your backyard, whatever, and get a better data so you set. Watch, or, you like, watch we'll, out for them. Yeah. So, like, well, yeah, let's get what's in the report mm -hmm. actually um, in the GIS database. And if there's additional trees or there's trees that we couldn't access, we can mark those as we go. And then we can have a follow up where we, you know, Contact with the landowner. And is it? Do you think it would be possible even to? If really, from the street, you can get most of them. Yeah. They have. I mean, the, that base of the Hello, Dave. Dave's Dave, here. Dave, this is me. I think I've ever had. Oh, yeah. That's saying a lot. The, 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 the day of the tropical storm must have been busy. Oh, I don't know. I'm going to walk in one right now. Well, thanks for coming. Yeah. yeah no problem. I have to eat. That's it. I don't know why. It's not a problem. We need to keep you healthy. I ran out of juice. Sorry. It's all good. So this is Sam Star. Hi. Sam, this is Hi. Sam Lawrence. In case you don't already know, he is our public works director, and he's been running the Street Tree program, amongst a thousand other things. But that is one of the things he comes and reports on to us. One of the things. He's, he's also a town tool board. Oh, that's right. And the damn patrol is. Yes. <laughs> it's an agent. Is that what it is? That's what they call it. Damn control agent. <laughs> okay. Double O seven. Is it saying you get a uniform for that or like something fancy for that? <laughs> <laughs> we need to get some other stuff because he sits around me too much. Um so we were just Good seeing everybody. Nice seeing you. Sorry about too. this disruption. Oh, I thought okay. that. So we were just talking about the Emerald Ash um, for report wow. and survey, getting out and integrating the <clears throat> the 2017 report into the street tree program, and um, that we would like to have at least the first meeting or first on the ground walkabout with um, Louisa Crane, who did the report, um, and with um, Caitlin. Caitlin, I think it's Thompson. Thompson. Be I think it's Thompson, but I'm not sure. The assistant assessor. It's probably going to be more. I mean, who who said to, that we would need to go go? I mean, I, Caitlin's involved in GIS, but I think CAI has been the one that's been doing all of our integration with the platform we've been working on. Well, when when we met with Audra last uh, earlier this month, technically, actually, um, it was suggested that if she had the time, if it fit her schedule, that maybe she would come out and. It was just like one way to see how we were using the GIS data and meet. I, I want to at least throw it out there. If it doesn't work out or doesn't need to happen, that please that she integrates or works with us in any way, that's fine. But um, if there's something. So when you look at the when you look at the screen, like you go to the website, yep. you're you're looking at 
you're looking at um, access GIS, not ARC GIS. Well, and it's, it's, okay. it's like a, it's like a, like a, like a dumbed down version. Of, yeah, our, it's one, yeah, yeah, right, right, yeah, simplified version of, <laughs> and they manage it for us and they do all the migration and integration yeah. with the trees, with this stormwater. I yeah. believe all of that is kind of tied into that. Mm -hmm. So it might, we might need to, personally, what I think we should do to make it easy is we take the stuff that's been done. We gave it to, we give it to, um, CAI, oh. and we say, can, put, and they put, just put it in. They do it. Um, well, also, can <clears throat> I was going to see if CAI, 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 yeah. it can they make sure the app has it, an icon or something so that we know that we're, if we're just bash trees or there's something with Yeah, the we would give them a different, right. give them a different icon, right, right or yeah. something. So when you're looking yeah, at it, you, you know, so that's a good. Yeah. And, and the other thing too, what we haven't done yet is if we haven't taken the old actual inventory and that hasn't been I oh, think, integrated into the whole system. Remember, we, well, we, we did, but we didn't validate. We had three inventory? Yeah. yeah. That's, that's what we were talking about. So so we put the old information into the, pro, the ArcGIS. And, and so what we were first started out doing was putting all the new stuff in. Yeah. And we've done that. And we, now we have that up and running and that's working. Um, still some things we have to tweak with that. But then there's the old, I think uh, Keith Blizzard was involved and they, they did that spreadsheet and then we we uploaded all of that information into the ArcGIS also. And what we were supposed to, and what happened was most of it went where it was supposed to go, mm -hmm. but it needs to be validated. So you got to go out to the location and say, oh, it's saying, you know, oak tree here. Yeah, it's here. And then somehow say this is okay. What happened though? Maybe like thirty, maybe maybe a little bit more of the trees that were part of that original tree forestry plan was got put out in the ocean. They didn't all migrate directly where they needed to go. <laughs> you know, but when you look at the map, it's showing them like off into the like in the silhouette or something. Yeah, they're just like not where they're supposed to be. Got it. So we really need, so part of all this was validating all of the old trees that we, Bart Wood did. And then this other part of the Emerald Ash Blower, that's another thing similar to that. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe we probably would be good cool. to meet with Aaron, the guy that does the work that, and figure out the cost of that. Yeah. And then what, <clears throat> what we want. Yeah. So and then I could just so you know, well, uh, last meeting, Audra brought up Caitlin, right? Mm -hmm. You know, you know, Caitlin. Yeah, right over here. Okay, and she he, she said that Caitlin had it had some proficiency with the uh, GIS, and that had expressed some interest in learning more about it and potentially contributing to our ability to utilize that tool more efficiently. Okay, so it, just so you know, yeah, I mean, I mean that makes sense, but that's diverging from what yeah. we've been using. So that's using that's using like yeah, yeah, you know, Ar ArcGIS, not Access. Yeah, whatever. Well, I'm only telling you. Yeah, what I heard. I'm I don't I <laughs> I'm not far not an expert with this I, thing. If if she can do it and, and it's a usable platform and we can work up the problem is is that we we all don't have access to ArcGIS. Right. That's, yeah, that's you know, we're working off of access right now. Yeah, it's kind of confusing. It's very confusing because I thought you went to the ArcGIS website to get into the thing, right? No, you when you log well, when I log in, right? I don't know. I'm the they're, worst they're, person in the world. They're, to like, they're married together. Yeah. All right. And 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 maybe it'd be good for me to understand so I can better communicate with you guys what it, you know, I'm not doing a good job, I don't think. But. Well, you know. No, I mean, it's, it's, it's probably, it, I mean, it is, a, it is a, um, a GIS software. It's probably, like you said, it's it housed within like the ArcGIS system, but it's, it's the tier. It's like there's the top tier and then there's, right. you know, other tiers. So and they we're sort of, Worse, we as in the tree, I you know, ID and management program is sitting in kind of what I would call a lower or middle tier rather than this like upper, upper yeah. tier. So, like the difference between having case 
access and you know and uh, and administrative access to you know the system. So what she might be able to do though is maybe package it to give it to them to put into the system. That's, yeah, because the system makes it easier for us to use. When you're getting into ArcGIS, you have to know a little bit about that program. It's not, it's not super. Is it yeah, Caitlin, no. she's she's taken a course about ArcG, uh, ArcGIS accesses. Like if you go to the website or you go to our apps and all that, that's yeah. that's running off of the app. So I don't okay. think Audra knows all of the. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, yeah, I mean, she's the boss. She's she's the manager, but she does. I don't think she knows the details yeah, yeah. of how that's all linked together. Maybe I've just found it like when I. So at one point, I I I, I agreed to be, or I volunteered, not agreed. I volunteered to be the person to put the data into the, um, to the to the database, right? Mm -hmm. And like B B gave me a, a handwritten R thing, right? You were in ArcGIS when you did that. Well, I was in whatever. Whatever I log in in your login, right, for the street tree stuff, right, right, and I put it in, and I found it to be kind of a little kludgy, but and then what would be really nice to have would be the ability to just download a spreadsheet, a list with a street address, with trees, and something, so I don't have to be necessarily going around with my phone and be looking at the map, and I mean. A way to communicate in and out. That's kind of what you had asked for before. Right. Yeah. A way that we could communicate with standard yeah. fields like street. And this is and this standard is, conventions. This is for the for what? It, well, we got the we, we got the even with the, uh, the emerald ash board with oh. the ash trees, anything, right? Yeah. Like I don't want to I don't want to like uh, uh sh Shanghai the meeting here, by the way. Maybe we should do something offline yeah. or something yeah. like this, but it would be really nice. Sorry. <laughs> I always appreciate these. We'll, we'll look into it. Okay. <laughs> but if Caitlin can help, that'll be good. It's just, I see this thing as a giant tangle that I'm not going to go near. But, it's like the but I think that you do need to get together. Yeah. Yes, I agree. And, and with more of So this is an action. Yeah. We need to figure so out. It is part of this project. Yeah. It's part of this and, and future projects. And it is, it's an important somewhat messy but important piece it's so that very can, important. yes because it, it's going to actually you know you have get swallowed up in it if you the don't information yeah, yes, yes, so right. what are we going to do so so so, it, so at our last meeting in september we were brian and i and caitlin and uh and um louisa, louisa right. we're all going to go out and start uh verifying these uh ash trees that are in louisa's report Seeing, you know, if there's like still locations, there, locations, oh, if they're yeah. still there, if they're how, you know, how much they've grown since 2017, if yeah, that's yeah. any information, yep. if they look good, you know, what the condition is, are so what? If, so do we? Are we going to do that, or are we going to wait well, now? We, for, we just, Rebecca's going to send an email to Louisa and Caitlin yeah. and the committee, okay. set an initial date to see if either one of them can. But we need a way to get it into the data. I was going to say, you might want to do that yeah, because simultaneously so that you're verifying where it is and you're making these notes at the same time so you don't have to do it twice. Right. You know and I mean? so Dave, the point is going to talk, talk maybe with Caitlin. You know what I mean, Pamela? See it and have an interview. We're out there with our oh, phones yeah. to be yeah. able to, to put data right in right then. Yes. Right? Yeah. Instead of do we so then do we need to wait for CAI? To that's what I'm wondering. Uh, let input? me just talk with them to okay. make sure that we're not going to do something that's going to like create more work for us. Okay. Because because right. ideally, if it's uh, if it's something Caitlin's not capable of doing because she doesn't have access to what they do, yeah, we mm -hmm. we can just sure. budget that amount and then ask them what they need from us, and there might be something that she has to help us with, right? And we do it all together. Okay. That way we're not kind of stepping over ourselves, you know yeah. what I mean? Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's okay. a powerful tool. I think, we have a, I think we have a semblance of a plan here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll, uh, yeah. Okay. Definitely. Good so that. we're not going to do anything until you look into that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah I'll talk with Caitlin and uh, and Aaron and we'll, we'll, uh, we'll figure out what the next steps are to get the emerald ash borer. And there's also the verification of the old tree inventory that we've never done. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Since are, are you um does it matter what happens to the elms in town? Because we we well, we do have official elms in town. Okay. If we if we get the blue hill thing. 
they had an outbreak. I, I sent an email. Yeah, yeah, I saw yeah, that. that. And and it's not just Blue Hill. I don't believe but it's down there. Mm -hmm. And and uh, Phil, I put put it in my email. Phil Norris and somebody who's working with Blue Hill has had me. They're very pleased with it because yeah, I didn't they, understand. They spot the they well. They're looking at the elms. I mean, they, they have them sort of lined up still, I guess. Some of them they've been protecting. And so they're watching a certain number of elms. And they'll see a branch to see the, the elm disease is a composite, two parasites collaborating. And so they'll see a branch that's going and they cut it as fast as they can, like within the next day, he said. I mean, you can call them. They talked about the yeah, he thing we went to Augusta a little bit. I, yeah, yeah. So they they're just pruning off the infected part, and then yeah. this is he, preserving he, the tree. He says that, that, yeah, and he feels they're getting great success just from that. That's what he told me. He just seems kind of too little. Right now, I well, I mean, yeah, it's, it's going to be infecting. Right, it's going to be jumping around. Right, but. I guess they're watching particular trees. So I don't know. It's the boys about trees. Yes. Do you want to talk? Um, a couple of people on my street have this beef, new beech tree. Beech leaf disease. Beech leaf yeah. disease. Oh, I don't know if we should be. If we're talking to CAI, I mean, should we be doing anything with that? If we're looking at trees anyway, trying to identify them, or would that be in the some other situation. Yeah, sure. um, <coughs> I think we're yeah. not taking care of that. Maybe main, main, main Forest Service is really the primary point of contact for the beach leaf disease. Um, and there's still as much um, lack of information as there is current information. Um, and does it kill the tree? The beach isn't that not necessarily it? no no but you know but it certainly an already weakened tree you know if it's got beach bark disease and beach leaf disease and it's got you know you know a slit or a thing you know i mean it's right. it's not gonna it's not gonna improve the health of the tree per se Just um, the but tree. but you know some some you know some diseases are more cosmetic and some are more you know, like long term systemic slow kind of painful, you know, whatever, hopefully not painful, <laughs> slow death of tree, you know, but we're not sure yet. It's still relatively new to the area. And um, so we're, you know, we're trying to discern that they, we, the collective community of, of you know, foresters and arborists, et cetera, are trying to determine what the, you if, know, if they believe it's a nematode. I don't know if they, they, Think for sure it's a nematode, you know, and then what's the transmission and rate and you know what do we need to do for best practices as you know humans. So I I think that um how quickly that I've seen it spread that spending any time mapping it is and we have other priorities um and I think we should put our energies there professionally speaking but um but you know, that's, I think that it's just not something that we can tackle right now. I don't think we have enough information. If, if, you're, if you have people who have ornamentals they want to protect, I know that Nancy and Doug have something that they... Yeah, there are some, some treatments that are still helping to stem the the spread, but um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's here. It's going to kind of unfortunately integrate into tree pests and um, I'm not entirely sure I don't, any more than I think any other person is as to what the exact um, mortality rate may or may not be as a consequence. So hopefully it's just another blemish that the poor beach trees have to endure, but only time is going to really tell. So, so you don't think that we're very serious? No, I'm not, I'm not dismissing it by any stretch. I think that or as much as I have been able to read and as many people as that I've been able to talk to within the spirit that um, they are going as kind of quickly as they can pulling previous data and research and looking at other areas, but I don't think they have um, 
enough history in other places to know exactly how it's going to go. The new big, the big proper beach on Washington apparently has it, although they're, oh, really? they're not worried about it because they are getting some help. So, and I don't know that I know much about it. So. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think, um, like I said, I've, I, I personally wouldn't recommend that we start trying to map that as well. I think we have enough to I think it's catch up with. And I think private. that will, the, the personal, the, yeah, I think the private. artists and, yeah. and the main work service collectively can kind of help individuals on that problem for now. Um, so the next thing item is uh, print materials. Um, were, we, were you able to get the brochures printed? Yes. Would you that. like to share? Yes, I can pass. I brought one to pass around. Um, yeah, Andre um, printed them up for us. We got. I got 50 to start with. I was thinking for the native plant sale, but that was canceled. So we still have 50-ish. Yeah, <laughs> well, that's all right. Yeah, this came out nice. Yeah, that's very nice. Yeah. Uh, Sam, Thank for your you. point of reference, we did a, a trifold brochure about the Camden Conservation Commission and um, who we are, what we do, what current projects we're working on. So um, when we're at against, you know, we can share the express it, word. And, is it online? I was just going to ask. Not did you? Yet, that would be my next, that would be the next step. Mm, yeah. Okay. Just to see if it could get put on the PDF on the town website. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody can just bring it up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and it's every July. So I've been thinking about maybe other, you know, other things that um, we can do for, particularly the sea fair where there were so many kids, you know, to make just, just really simple sort of interactive things or informational things about our, you know, like the presentation that Audrey gave, you know, when she yes. was there, it was, it was so enlightening. I mean, I had right. so much, I learned about our watershed in 10 minutes, whatever, however long that took. And um, I feel like that, you know, that we could, th that's the sort of thing that I think would be, I think really interesting to middle school kids too, to just learn more about the Nogunic River watershed, why, you know, how quickly it drains into the harbor, why we need to be mapping these things. And as well as just the public. Yeah, well, the um, yeah, Water Conservation yeah. District has um, a watershed model. Um, it's something that Louisa and I could, uh, I say train, but just share with you as to how to utilize. So oh, no matter yeah. who was, who wanted to use it for whatever up upcoming event, uh, adults and kids like it. It's, yeah, you know, because it's interactive, and you can, you know, you can put the purple dye in the boom. That's three yeah, where you can neat. pour the That's industrial neat. fluids into yeah. the you know, little building and it flushes out into oh, the you know, mm -hmm. cover oh, and you know, you can, yeah. it's it's pretty well used. Um so it's looking a little rough around the edges right now. Um but but it still serves the purpose and I think um it's a good way to engage um with the yeah um yeah, that's that great. middle that yeah. middle age middle age group middle you know school group age and um and the, like you said, the adults and the teachers are just as into it, really. Um, so, so that would be something that we could easily awesome. share yeah. um, for upcoming outreach events. Um, so, yeah, we do that. I'm sure even how hard it would be to set up like um, Audrey's presentation or something like that. Mm -hmm. It was so short, just to sort of have it running on a laptop or something, or you know what I mean? Yeah, um, yeah. In certain places. Yeah, I think. That is better for the adult group. They could extract the pieces of it um, and do some <laughs> other high, high schoolers. Oh, high school is fine. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I would say I tailor it to the audience. To make that something they could see or play. Maybe she goes. I don't know. But it'd be nice to have it available yeah. for them. Will there be a copy of the brochure in the uh, town office or the library or anything? That I could pick up. I could. I, could I, I would drop. Some. Yeah, maybe yeah. ten here and ten there. That's a good plan. Thank I mean, maybe that. I could just pass the PDF to the minutes. Okay. Oh yeah, let's, let's do that. that. Yes. The, the final version. Yes. Go out with the minutes. Do that. Thank you. Um, and the next item on the agenda, is, um, and yeah, so thanks again, Pamela, for because oh, sure. it came out great. You oh, really kind of took that on and 
got it done in good order. So that was really good. You did a yeah. good job with that. I hadn't, I mean, you did that, yeah. you did that in just a one one cycle, huh? Oh, yeah. Nice job. Yeah, one or one draft and then a yeah. hand free. Yeah. Everybody, everybody, everybody yeah. 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 is gets kudos yeah. on all that. Yeah. yeah. That's just really that was her sort of pet project she took right on and oh, got it, was, it done. It was <laughs> so um so the next item on the agenda is website, which I suspect will be fairly short because at this point in time we can't really add they can't really add a lot to so we're looking at doing a separate website and then it becomes sticky because who manages it because committee chairs and or members change. So um I think we like the idea of it, but I think now it's what perhaps can we add like this PDF of, of um, the Camden Conservation Commission to the existing town website that won't um, burden or um, become too cumbersome or add a, another layer to their website that they aren't yet paying for or documenting. I mean, I know that it was um, a little confusing about, you know, we would like to have the web presence um, more than just who we are, but to have additional information, but then it becomes how it, how the information is, who manages it, who adds to it, who subtracts, or is it us really just burdening said person that it's assigned to? If things aren't going to be online, if things, if it's too burdensome, there should be a boy that somebody in town could come in and look at stuff. Yeah. So you, they, you know, well, right now, like our, there used to be a paper and you could look at a file. Yeah, yeah, somebody would tell you where it was. Yeah. Yeah. So but I think, no offense, 50, but I think most people will first thing they're going to do is look online. Yeah, but it's not going to be there. I know, but that's, well, that's why we're trying to figure out I mean, what things we can do that are maybe just quick links or I mean, this, this thing right here is, is basically, if you just put this, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it covers it, right? This, this takes care of all of it. So maybe I'll just ask. Audra and Janice, if they could either make a spot on the public works page that has, you know, on the trees or so, I don't know, maybe a spot by itself. I don't know, but I'll ask. Yeah. Because I, I mean, if it's already done, I don't think putting this in is that hard. For like, I think, no, I think that's doable. I think for yeah. us, it was like this, like extra. Yeah. Yeah. And, and none of us really had expertise except yeah. Allison, who really was just sitting around doing nothing. So, you know, she should be able to do it. But. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think this is like something you update in. No, I mean, think the alternate like, was to have our own complete website, but none of us are really. Good I was going to say, who, I mean. Except for Allison, and she's already kind of going to the mind. That's a lot of work maintaining Maybe that. You know. I know, that's the thing. None of us are good at it. Like, so here. No. And, Unless Samantha. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, that, that might be a, a space I can help with um i think you're right that like is there anything more depressing than going to a website and it's like back in 2017 we did this and then nothing um right yeah, yeah. Um, right it's hard to get people to to commit to i mean not that they're not committed but it is a hard thing to commit to 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 regularly update mm -hmm. that information i guess like a, another uh avenue sometimes people go is you have a, a website with with information that is okay to be stagnant like here's information about the conservation commission that won't change and mm. the information that does change like here we meet we're doing this this week uh you know more regular updates sometimes come through social media you know you have like a facebook or an instagram page and you say you know you commit to like updating that and there's a link on your website to that because that's just easier for some people to update but anyway yeah. Well, even the, uh, the list of members on some of these are not accurate, right? It's already, you're still, yeah. Yeah, I mean, even the most basic things need to be updated. I agree yeah. with you, Samantha. It's, it is depressing when you look at something and it's <laughs> like the last piece of uh, information was from 2018 or something. Yeah, there's a lot of that out yeah, there. Yeah, there's a lot of that out there, right? My, my public works page is that. I mean, because I don't have real access to it. Right. You know, so. Yeah. yeah. So what are you going to do? Yeah. Right. Uh, doing your spare time. Right. <laughs> All that spare time. <laughs> I'd be happy to help with, especially with that basic, 
you know, if there are identified pieces that are out of date, which is like, you know, as simple as membership or how, like how often you meet and when, um, I don't know, that, that might be something I can help with if you want. <laughs> um, there's that group that sends out the meetings. Um, Danny Solomon's involved in Jess Scott. Let's, let's... Is that the, the Magenta Great River? No, I, no, this is, this is like, it's, it's, it's all of the mid coast. And Who's they the send out, um, you guys just get invites, invites to that, right? They talk about, they talk about all kinds of environmental projects that they work on. It's a resilience thing then. Yeah, I mean, I think that's that what I But anyway, my point is, is that they send out like a, they send out like a meet, like a, or just an email thing that, that basically informs everybody what's going on. And then they have, uh, and they have meetings like there's one current going on at the steel house coming right up and then they had another one in thomaston and they had another one over here and you, huh. well, you actually uh barb you went to it the what? one that we went to over there that barons yeah yeah that group. yeah that's uh the one samantha is always talking samantha more left is telling us about right well yeah. oh, that's the climate yeah, the last couple I've just been too busy. It's about it's about yeah, it's about yeah, energy and green building yeah, happy hour. What? The the green happy hour. Climate, yeah. energy, and green building happy hour. Yeah. You guys ought to go to that. That's I that's know, pretty decent. Cool, but yeah. it's not clear when it happens. It, no, it's 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 not every month. It's they send out a blast, an email blast telling everybody when it's going to Yeah, I out. tried to get on it. And I, yeah, I tried to figure out how to get on the mail list and I couldn't even figure it out. Like that's just defeating my whole life. I'll look it up and send it to everybody in the community. Yeah, but anyway, that, that was my thought. Well, Sorry, we could do like an email yeah. thing, like we could have a, a send out an email blast of updates and just have the static yeah. page. They did, they did it at Waterman's Beach. Yes. And yeah. I couldn't yeah. get to it. Well, I went, I was really good at walk there. Um, okay. um, yeah. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, are we good on sort of the website outreach piece for the for the moment? I want to kind of keep the keep the meeting rolling, if you will. Um, meeting no objection. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, I wanted just to give a quick update on the Knox Coastal Conservation Commission Working Group. It's a really long name, but that's what we came up with because. That's essentially who we are. It's all the coastal communities in Knox. So, um, started getting together in person, and then we decided quarterly, uh, and it was like monthly to kind of get us going and figure out how we could collaborate or share information and overlap on um, outreach and education, or even thinking bigger with technical assistance and grant projects and in the future. So. It's been really informative to see who's doing what and um, what where their energies are focused. And um, we met on uh, September 14th was our, our first official quarterly meeting um, as assigned and by Zoom in the at seven o'clock in the evening. Um, and so it was a recap of uh, St. George did a tour in um, this summer in August on um, solar installations, whether it's private residence or commercial or, or municipal, it, it didn't matter. It was like sharing the process, the, the timeline, the costs, the, the companies involved, the, the you know, and, and um, it was really well attended and it was really well, the feedback was really good. I didn't attend, but other um, Conservation Commission members from other towns did attend as well as just, you know, kind of residents at large. And the feedback was um, doing something like that, maybe annually, at least biannually, you know, like regularly enough um, and spreading it out. So like would Camden, just for instance, want to try to put one together for next summer um, and talk, you know, and it, it only has to be three or four, two or three, and, you know, and you open it up just like you would a garden tour or other, you open it up for just like that day. It's just the drive yourself and, you know, um, and then share the, the information and then they have whichever um, company or vendors and, and the residents and or business people that were involved um, on site to, to do little walk and talks and 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 share um, the different um, the different.
the technologies and and um, content, you know, options for for reducing, you know, our sort of ecological footprint and utilizing these alternative energy sources. So, um, so does, does that seem to be? Is there like a, did they talk about like the feasibility of all that? Is there like a so they weren't talking about this were for individuals, so it wasn't about um solar farms. No, no, I'm talking like for home for home use. Is that what it was about home yeah, use? Right? Yeah. So yeah. does it make sense for somebody to do this on their home? Oh yeah. So yeah, I mean that would be one of the questions. Is, yeah, I was just curious if that could so yeah. um, you know, so like we've looked at doing it, you know, on our on our property yeah. on both when we lived in Rockland and here, and and, and the capability for the property that we had in Rockland was it was Help, but it, but too. even like the you know a good company would say probably only going to get 20 30 percent or whatever or, you know like it's you're not going to get a huge because you're just you don't have the right you know setup you know too much shade. yeah too much shade your your and your roof lines are you know north south and or, or I guess south would be good but you know east west and pitched you know sure. kind of opposite the way those you know, but if you had like optimum um, yeah, yeah. Orientation does it does it pay yeah. solar? Does it, it does pay, pay off? Pay. God, it's yeah. paid off. I got four years of data now. Does it did it pay off in a short period of time? Well, I would say short. I mean, it's not. Well, it's... but better than ten years. It takes more than ten years to pay. pay oh, back. ten. Yeah. Okay. But That's the internal true. rate of return is huge. There's, there's quite a few. I mean, we if you were interested. What's that? What was the name? I can talk you through. Well, so it's the St. George yeah. Conservation Commission um, no, like budget. The, the group that I met was was is for the Knox everything. Coastal wow. Conservation Commission working group. But the, which we now meet later. quarterly. Yeah, I can show you working data for spreadsheets. I think it depends on how much electricity you use as well. You know, because I have Revision Energy come out and look at and hit, look at my my house. And he just, he said, uh, you know, you don't use very much electricity. So I would have been doing it basically just because it's cause. an environmental, yeah. yeah. Revision is not interested in doing it on people's houses. They did great. Right. Oh, good. <laughs> no, they did a great job. I recommend um, them to a lot I know, of people. Without getting into all the great. companies and all the nuances, I really just wanted to share mostly yeah, what's no, happening with the coastal, you know, community right. stuff. So right. that's an option that we can talk about here in Camden, or just again quarterly with the group at large. And if anybody would want to host, or or if it was a collaboration, that could be a great collaboration with Rockport in Camden, like at Conscom. So because yeah. we are certainly close enough. You know, instead of somebody way down the peninsula, they're kind of a little more isolated into it. There's, you know, like we could say, yeah, let's post it, and it's two properties there, two properties here, and drive about, and you know. But it was something that definitely have, has piqued people's interest, and was people appreciated seeing the installations and asking the questions, mm -hmm. both of the landowner and of the companies involved, to see, you know, if it was something they really wanted to pursue, and so it was just kind of a nice. Um, Nice way to make some outreach and um, share the connection with conservation and with energy consumption, etc. Um, the other thing that came up was uh, the which we talked about um, before was the night um, the night sky conversation that we've had, which was eons ago. But I didn't understand that last time we were talking. Yeah. So so there's a lot of data out that shows um, too much um, light pollution really can. It, it impacts moths and other insects. It impacts birds, birds and mammals movement. And it, yeah, it just it, it impacts wildlife at large, and and it changes even our own sort of circadian rhythms if we have too much light at times when we would be sleeping. And um, so, you know, it's it's part of the environmental conversation at large, and and something that has come up. Um, a couple, Owl's Head was really kind of leading the charge. They have a permission to utilize a, a, a video that's, I think, actually was done here in Maine. Um, it's about a 15-minute video, and so there was some talk about um, finding the right setup, which we kind of were leaning at maybe it would be at the, um, ironically, at, the, at night, show that night at the, <laughs> Um, at the, I was like, maybe you're show it at night, but yeah, um, um, at the dragon. Um, and uh, I said that might defeat the whole point of the conversation. 
Um, but to find a space or place, you know, whether we use the um, the um, theater that's at um, not Island Institute, what's the other one there? Uh, the, the Strand, or even the other one um, in town, and um, oh. and you and to um, sh showcase the video, to show the video, but to have it as a outreach event that that the working group that Camden Rockport, Owlhead, Rockland, like we all do some outreach and we all did, sort of did they make the there. video or it's a video they got information about no it's it's a video that somebody in the state here in the state has done like as a as a documentary there was an organization and um, yeah doing that not that video but yep two tables of the fair and dark oh, sky yeah and and it's again we have access to people like so maybe the organization would come and talk and mm -hmm. you know and so there was no decision made but that I just an informational share. movie an informational movie yeah. then a couple of like biologists and or you know somebody from like this nonprofit with some research and data just to share with the public you know well the, the energy committee and... did those lights specifically in response to dark sky sensitivity the the lights that only have the, lights the down that goes and, down. Of course, they reflect up anyway, but yeah, helps. Yeah, and th there's also the wavelength of the light too. Oh like, yeah, there's like, a lot of like the lights we chose are like favorable to that whole problem. You know, there's ones that you can buy that are on the other end of the spectrum that are bad. Yeah, yeah. And, and one of the things they talked about doing was doing like a movie right over here in the parking lot. Yeah, and casting it on that on the building. Yes. Was, remember and, that. Mm -hmm. And Doug used to do it uh, across the road on the post office. He right. started the movie, mm -hmm. the cinema, the wonderful cinema that we had for years mm -hmm. and years. Mm -hmm. He started on the post office building. So you could do that. Too. We do it yeah, for the so, art night. So again, it's another um, another thing that we could, um, you know, if we're interested, you know, I can reach back out to the group and say that, you know, this. Yes, no, maybe, but these are these are things that that came. Oh, kind of neat to do something like kind of over here and then make a kind of a night of it, kind of type of thing. Yeah. You know, I mean, it would take some planning, but yeah. I think people would like it. Yeah. Well, so on Bayview Street, you, you you sort of you can shut it off. More. I don't know how easy it is to shut off. Or you're talking about the parking lot. Yeah, we're doing the parking. Yeah, lot. yeah, yeah. Yeah, because then people can walk to it. Yeah, and yeah, you yeah. Shut the road yeah, right off. Great. Yeah, yeah, you know, we can we could do something like that. Really yeah. Yeah. So so there was a lot of good stuff that comes out of it. And it certainly um, helps particularly, you know, any group, but you know, we've got some small, some smaller groups with a couple just a, you know, two or three people and you can you can feel overwhelmed or like, you know, what you're you're rolling about a boulder uphill sort of thing. So it's nice to have the collaboration and the sharing of ideas or or thing. Oh, you like we've already look, we have a template for for you know this. You can change Camden Conservation Commission to South Thomaston and like you know help each other along with you know getting the outreach and the education and information out there. So is that something you guys want to do? Just something like that here? Or? I would say that I will. I can speak for the group, the coastal group at large, they're keen to do something in the area. So whether if we want to take the take up the cause and pull them in and you know share that I'm not you know, pushing share. anybody, but I just think that if you you know you've got you've got the group here and that we don't really have anything we're working on right now. They you could pick something like that and say we're gonna try and do this at a certain time of the year and and I think it'd be kind of neat to do something like that. Yeah. You know, I think people would I think it's an educational thing that people need to know about because people just don't know. They yeah. don't know. Yeah. I mean, it'd be a great opportunity to do little like night walks with a couple of biologists yeah. and, and naturalists. And Before it's cold, like nothing. Yeah. Or the yeah. summer. As long as you had a rain date. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 But it would be kind of neat to do something like that, I think, in town. Yeah. That's really doable. That's not a hard thing to yeah. reach. Yeah, just do an like, existing building. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What around um what about around um like Earth Day or something, like something that. Yeah. in that early spring? But anyways, we can talk about it. But if it's something we can we can put it on for a more uh, planning session for next next month or over the winter. Um, there's not much to talk about in terms of the Tree City USA other than uh, hats off to Samantha 
more about forgetting the date set last month um, or earlier this month. She set it for April 26, 2024. So we have a locked in date and we, which is already on my calendar, and we can um, plan ahead a tree planting location as part of the street tree program. And we have more than enough time to put something on the, the calendar, on the um, town website, and do all of the sort of uh, foundation. But for the date again, it is April, Friday, April 26, 2024. So I think for, September of 2023, we, we've got a pretty significant piece of. <laughs> Is this like the thing that we did on Pearl Street? Correct. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, but we're going to get the kiddos involved. We're going to do something it, it, in and around it's the, called the Ar Ar local Arbor Day. It's Arbor Day. Yeah, it's our local Arbor Day, part of Tree City USA. Um, I think getting, whether um, getting the Camden Rockport Middle School involved. Um, would would be. And they have all their wonderful trees. There. They have a lot of wonderful trees, but that doesn't mean they can't walk down yeah, the street. Yeah, I know, but I mean, they can do stuff right there and in the school. Yeah, and just do a little, you know, have it integrated that way would be a really nice kind of win win. I'd like them to concentrate on Milton Street, what needs to be done there, and then mm -hmm. you know, anyway, it's not too bad. Um. Yeah, they certainly have a lot more plantings here. Um, the next item on the agenda is to I uh, to set the date or something a date or dates for some tree or stormwater mapping. We said that we wanted to make sure every month we tried to get something on the calendar and kept the momentum going. Um, so I uh, we're running out of days this month, folks. But um, <laughs> <laughs> but. Um, and Barb is understandably excused, but I can say that if a group of uh, one or two of other, you know, of us wanted to go out on Saturday um, and technically get September checked, um, I have some time in the morning if Saturday works. Otherwise, we're looking into October. And then it's just kind of free for all. So I may or may not join you. <laughs> it's gonna be kind of crazy. Is it the wastewater? Either one. We can map trees or we can map wastewater or we could do or we could do both within like one street or two or three blocks. We can kind uh, of and that's the list of the ball pipes and well at the last meeting we talked about how none of us really understood what we were supposed to be doing. Yeah, with the wastewater app, it was well and Allison was gonna do the wastewater stuff with I'm us. I'm confused so we about the, that. We were just really like, you look at it, it's like storm water. 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 Right, storm water. Storm water. You got it. But we were, um, we were just both all of that just kind of like go. So I think what we're trying to do, you know, just real simply is when you're walking along shoreline and you're identifying all falls that we don't even know that exist and then marking them on, on the GIS. So it's along the shoreline, yeah, the ocean, ocean or the river, any shore, it's any any water body of it, yeah. So like the big, so like when you, you, what we find is when you're walking along the shoreline, you'll see outfalls that you just don't even know are there. Yep. And then it just prompts you to start following it back. And then you realize, oh, it's connected to this or it's still in there. Or, you know, it's, still, it's trying to complete that map of understanding where everything's going. Um, I think that's what really the, the main focus is for all kinds of reasons. You just want to have documentation of like, where all the lines go. Because for the longest time, we have no documentation for that. Right. You know, it's just, you know, one person knew where they were. Are there specific areas you'd want to start in first? I, I think what, I'm not going to speak for anybody, but what I recall Allison talking about is wanting to walk the shoreline because, or actually it came up with Brian Robinson. Yeah. yeah, he yeah. was going to, he he was going to take his boat, yep. and then it's it sprung from there, well, we're going to walk the shoreline, and then, right, I think Allison kind of said, yeah, we can walk the shoreline. We're going to go out at a low tide, I remember. But part of it, too, was like, yeah. all right, not only we're going to wrap it in with identifying outfalls, but then there was also this access uh, shoreline access yes. issue, you know what I mean? You don't have one, right? And it's hard to get from one 
there's outcrops that are hard to get over. Right. So like at a low tide, you can get around piers and mm -hmm. things like that, and you can make make your way along the shoreline and identify just different things, different outfalls, mm -hmm. or just seeing something that that you didn't know existed, you know, that might not be right or um because people put things in and you just don't realize they've done it because they're you know they own the land from the shore to the mm -hmm. to the road. And you know, in theory they could almost do anything. And if you don't walk the shoreline, you wouldn't know. Um, I think it's just documenting where it is, not to make it too complicated. I won't be able to go Saturday. Yeah, they can't make the news, but uh, that's fine. Um, so, all right, so I'm looking at the tide chart. If we're going to do stormwater mapping, we can do tree mapping too. So it doesn't, I'm moving list like kind of flip, but we've got, um, let's all go out at 12.37 a.m. on the first. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that would be a yeah, hard Big sky stuff. Um, <laughs> you have to roll a bunch of things in. Yeah, right. Um, I'm out of town this weekend. I'm sorry. Uh, this weekend and next week, I'm I'm gone for a week for for work. So, I I'm not going to be around. I'm sorry. You are literally not going to get everybody. And what's going to happen is the farther into October we go, the less likely you're going to get me. But I I don't need to be there. We need like at least a couple people out to get you know together mapping. So, um, <laughs> in case the tide comes in. So anyway, so are there better days? Then others for anybody like is a Tuesday better or is a Thursday better or is a Monday because then I can just tell you when the low tides are in a.m. and p.m. and you guys can kind of go from there. I can do Halloween weekend. Halloween weekend. I'm gonna be gone for next week or until the 28th, 27th. Right. So sorry. Oops. Yeah. No. It is, it is what it is. So, um. All right, so the Halloween weekend is the 6.18 or 7.05, that's Monday, so wait, Saturday, Sunday, that's 4, ooh, that's, I'm off, but maybe not as real. Um, 4.44 is Saturday the 28th or 5.30 in the morning or 5.15 and 6.05. Those aren't really super cooperative dates yeah. or times, rather. <laughs> On the 28th and 9th of October? It's either real early or right in the middle of dinner. I could do it early. Okay. Unless you guys can do something sooner. That's, and that's, that's really super early. <laughs> no, no, no. I can't be there because I have an appointment mm -hmm. doing a thing that you have to do when you're after 50 year old. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I probably would be busy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Right. Oh, God. Um, so trying to get something that's agreeable. What about and most of the low tides are either early or late throughout the month? Let me choose. Well, well let, let, me, let them constitute a tree. I agree. Let's do trees. This just seems like trees this month would be easier. It does. Yeah, and they have leaves. Yeah. So that's the Easy. thing. Once, once they start yeah. losing their leaves, they get a lot harder. So we gotta, yeah. You're talking about the uh, ash trees again? I think we, we, we just need to get make sure we can. So if you look at the map, talk to Caitlin and I think if we look Louisa, at Louisa, right? We still got to do that first, right? So right, but if you look at the the app right now, let's see. Right? Ash it is. loose leaves a little earlier than. No, I don't hang start. on. No, hang on. The ash. They seem sort of interesting. They seem well. You have those it buds that are very yeah, identifiable. I took them down. And of course, they're opposite. You can see them once you realize them. Sort of not too hard in winter. The thing that works good for me was like the invasive plant thing, okay? Where you got access to a database and you just go when you got time, right? Right, I know. And you go out by yourself or you just send out an email, hey, I'm going 
I'm going to go out tomorrow and you're you available to find if not, you go up for a walk and you look around. That worked great. Yeah. Only because it, you know. I agree. It, it, that, that's, that's, yeah. So you just, because I think the key to this whole thing is to be able to take your phone and get at, like these, do it. the IMAPs invasive, that works great yeah. for me. I know, I mean, it worked for some people, well, but it worked good on my phone. How about we just try to set up one time where we could go out with, like, for instance, I'm not really good at even identifying ash trees. So if I could go one time, once we have it set up there with somebody who's like, yep, it's supposed to be these ones. This is how you look at the, you compare the two. And yep. Then you just go, either let's say, maybe at first, a couple people go together. Then after that, you start, we say, okay, can you now in the end of the month, all going to try to do yeah. X amount of data. I don't know, whatever that is. That doing. works. You know, because then you can, Everyone, we don't have to find one date, which has been such a challenge for us all along. Yeah. Yeah. You got, you got there. Well, yeah. Next, so next week, for example, on the fourth or the sixth, um, work, you know, work for me uh, pretty much any, any time. But we're going to get, we, but we still need to get that database. So, so if you go to this, the tree app. Yep. Okay. If you look at the tree app, there's the trees that we've been putting in with the circles, the right. squares, and the stars. But if you look on the same map, there's the yellow dots. Yep. Those yellow dots are the existing tree inventory that we never validated. Okay. So, so, so what you would do is, and I haven't done this yet, but you would go to that and you just pick a couple locations and you just go and there, okay. It's saying there's a tree here. Yep, there's a tree here. Yep, it's a Norway maple. Yep, okay. You just you say good, which I don't. I'll check on what you have to do to do that. <laughs> Maybe put in the notes that it's validated. Yeah, right. Checked by you know your name. Right. And then we know that those ones are done. But I'll double check to make sure that that's a sortable type of thing, so that once we've done those, we can sort out those ones that we right, and we can. Print off the ones that we don't have. Right. And then we got to get the ash trees on it. And then we got to get the ash trees in this, right. I think, is what has to happen. And it has to be a different icon like, so you know which ones are which. Yeah. Like I just looked on a hard map where I live and there says there's a European mountain ash at the top of my street. Yeah, it's probably could be cut down. I know they did a lot of cutting this last spring. So exactly. So my point is like like you'd say, all right, that tree's gone now. So mm -hmm. this is the thing we haven't yeah. done yet. Right. And yeah. so how would you note that on there? Let's say if that well, that's the part. <laughs> Yes. It's no. been so long that I so I'm looking at it. So we have so you get to the bottom. So I guess you I don't, I don't think you want to delete it because you want an inventory to say that it was there at one point in time. Mm -hmm. You don't want to just say it's gone. Well, one thing we could do with ash trees is maybe make the favorites the very bottom. Kind of. Unless so, other things that you need favorites. Oh, right here, tree inspection. Oh, and then you just add. Yeah. That's one of the options. So that's the thing we haven't done yet. And then the other thing you can do is is you can you can edit it. So if it's long, you edit it. So you can inspect it and you can edit it. Okay. So should we focus the energy then on the yellow dots, the not unidentified? I think it's something we have available. So yeah. Whether or not you want to do that, that's up to you guys. No, right. no, well, I think that's something more. We might get something more done. If yeah, all just productive. And, well, yeah, yeah, and like, so, okay, we've, at least we've all done at least ten trees, at least this, you know, yeah. in, in a month. That's whatever. I mean, you guys did a really good job with like identifying the locations where trees could be planted and talking to the people. This is this is the other part of it that we just haven't finished yet. Yeah. Maybe right. right. All right. Well, so we have, I sent you the information on the tree app. Yeah. Like via email. Yeah. And I'll send out a couple of emails that say when I'm available and if somebody can join, great. If not, but now we at least know to use the map and we can, or okay. the app you with the part? yellow dots. Yeah, I, I, I the, got a block back in. Oh, I don't remember the, the credentials, but I have them. At, uh, yep. So Sam probably doesn't have this at this point. Right? Sam, do you have the access to the. I think even the password, but I don't. I didn't have shared the app with her yet. Because maybe, it's, maybe at some point someone can go over it with you. It's just the it's just the app we use to do all the tree stuff. 
you can just look at everything uh, over Sure. Yeah, that'd be that'd be great. I'd put a message in the chat. I have to head back to work. Um you just got it. Yep. Okay. Nice. All right. Super really nice to meet you all. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Sam. Bye, Sam. Bye. Thank you for having me. Bye. 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 Yeah, I got this So look, we're gonna go to the tree app, we see the yellow dots, then you go see if the tree looking for go look at if it's there. A, any tree or ash trees. No, 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 this isn't the ash tree. But the ash trees could be in this. Because okay. if this what this was, and I think Beating knows more about it because this was during her era, but Bart Wood did this giant inventory. Okay. And he did it all by hand. And then we took all that information and we uploaded it into this this program okay. and it's the yellow dots okay and what we were supposed to do at one point was make sure that the migration was accurate so so in, in order that so that's what the inspection is for is you know okay. I'm looking at it it's been done it's in the right space or it's been cut down mm -hmm. or it's a different tree and so you can do that in, in the heel notes um well there's this that's one of the options it says so when you click it and, and i'm gonna I was going to say, I'm going to validate this with Aaron because it's been a year since I've looked at this. So I don't even remember it. I'll be perfectly honest with you. Um, but if you look at it, it says the inventory date, which uh, like that's not, it looks like that. See, the, it says related 2010. tree inspection. It was from 2010. So if you hit, I think if you hit tree inspection, it walks you through what to do. We can do one right now. I'll hit tree inspection and then it says add. So we'll add. So it says, so you can take a photo. It's just like what I do when I plant the tree. It tells you the condition. So I guess in here you would say, okay, good, fair, poor, known. Uh, if there's any hazards, and that's it. And you just take the photo and you attach it. But I'll double check with Aaron. And in the notes field, you can make notes. You can say the tree was cut down, the tree's dying. Looks uh, great. Looks good. No. No yeah, <laughs> not in this location, you know, different tree. Cancel. But I'll double check on that because this one's been more than a year. It's been for years now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. It's yeah. been a while. Yeah. Okay. Cancel. I, I did talk to Will Addis um, several weeks ago, and he's taking this course at Duke for environmental planning. He's very excited about it. How's he doing? Is he doing okay? He must be okay enough to do the thing at Duke. So, all right, well, that's good. He, yeah, he's been down there, and I think it's mostly yeah. remote. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So, um, okay. So I think we're just going to send out some, a couple emails or, and you feel free to do the same, like say, Hey, I'm available this day. And, and okay. let's just keep the momentum going. Let's just yeah. kind of gently publicly acknowledge we're going to nudge each other to like get one or two of us out there and, mm -hmm. you know, make sure that we're kind of moving, moving these, um, data sets and this information along. So, um, I think this makes the most sense. Yeah, it's totally fine. I just, I just know that we kind of, it's like the hurry up and wait, and then the, you know, the well intended. But I definitely want to be the more the well executed. <laughs> um. So the other business is the conservation commission appointments and vacancies. We have two vacancies. Um. What is, I, what is Samantha doing? So she's, um, she's a citizen. Like she's not official at this point. Um, so she's just an interested citizen uh, who chose to participate in the meeting today. Um, I would like to like send an email on behalf of the Conservation Commission and recommending that one of the vacant that, that is Sam Sharp agrees, which she has, you know, stated a letter of interest through the you know application, um, that we would encourage the select board to fill one of the two vacancies mm -hmm. with Sam Sharp. Mm -hmm. So unless there's I a second. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any thirds, any at all in favor? I agree. Good. I have yep. a question as well, though. I mean, yes. uh, it's been a year, I think, since we reconstituted, and weren't a couple of positions one year positions? I mean, do do they have to be 
So we're like renewed as well through the select board. Do you I or can we just her from Janice directly that there are two vacancies? Oh, okay. So we are All right. like, we're good. like they're at large. Not everybody else has people's names and dates attached. So what we have is two vacancies. Okay. And um, so I'll take that and then we'll get good. Um them so that's I will send an email before I send it all CC everybody on it, but I'll just send it directly to um Alec and Janice, like sort of stating that um you know we would like to do that left group um at the next meeting as appropriate um formally and invite her or appoint her to one of our two vacancies. Mm -hmm. Um then uh, this is just, these are two information pieces. I have one on the agenda um, because it's come up. This was mentioned at the um, Knox County Coastal County Commission, Conservation Commission's working group. Um, Pine Tree Power, you know, I don't want this again, there's no politics involved from my standpoint, but this is an information meeting that is happening at the SHRAM on um, what it is, how it works, um, hopefully, just spelling some of the myths and concerns and um it's you know it's an in-person information meeting on um what pine tree power is what it represents how it actually will work and so um it's this friday from 7 30 to 9 um so if you're interested um it's i'm just letting people let letting people know um and the other thing, while I have uh, conservation-minded people's attention, is um, wearing my other hat. Also, is the conservation commission or the conservation district has an annual bus tour, and it's coming right up. It's Thursday, the twelfth, and um, we're touring four properties in Lincoln County. So, um, if you are interested um, and have the time, um, we would love to have you join us and. Um, so I'll just pass that around. Um, we'll talk about best practices at four different ag properties, um, as well as have a guided bus tour and uh, lunch provided. Yes, B. You all know that there's this um, climate group starting up, and then there'll be talks and the sort of. The, I mean, I think the conversation one that you mentioned is peripheral and part of that but um are, are you getting emails at all or do you want to be you on you can yeah can, well, but can. i should definitely be added to that yes by all means forward that to the, this group so that we're in the loop i think the one of the things we talked about at the last really two meetings for, for the conservation commission is that there's a lot of um yeah you made a lot list. of environmental yeah, and enthusiasm I, and a lot of right yeah a lot of some what I would say maybe more <laughs> focused causes or or you know yep. groups and we as a non-regulatory and broad-based community you know attached to you know to the town group that we would like to kind of continue to know what's going on and how we can right. help or share or liaison you know information but <laughs> Um, yeah, so it's been it's they've been going they've been going sure. growing and moving faster than than you know I can should should that. I ask that everybody in this group be put on that list or is that I think that I already you're, asked you're, you're on so I yeah I'm you're gonna be gone Barb so um but um yes I'm not on it but I'm happy I'm happy to be added to it so whether you ask them to add me or you send it to me and then I ask oh, it's fine. fine. Um, and this is for news and Molly's been writing. Yeah, I'll, I'll see on it. I mean, I'd be love to get those. Um, and that list, I, I basically have updated it. Yeah, no, it was great. It's really it was like. Yeah, but I want to just. I want to. I can't. I want to just keep it focused on, like, organizations and not on, mm -hmm. like specific. Meetings or people. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. I think I agree. that meet regularly because yes. it just is way too confusing. Yeah, no, agree. I totally agree. Yeah, I totally. Agree. Yeah, okay, um, good. When, when I kind of forget who brought that up, I was just like, oh, just the names is good enough. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, is there any other business or any other concerns? Is there anything that you um 
since we, we missed your official time on the agenda. You've, you've added a number of points since you got here. Yeah. Is there anything else that we should know that's going on from your end or um, yeah, and anything from other committee members before we adjourn? Um, I mean, we, we're still plugging away at planting tree. We're a little behind on the tree planting this year. We've had this storm and this storm. Yeah, we've got a few things going on. Yeah, a little thing, a little bit broke, they've been kind of floating down a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think, no, I mean, I was going to say that when I was, when I was in Rockland, we had, uh, they had a program and it was kind of, I was on the energy committee was there and it was a, a um, the program where they did this this um, weatherization of everyone's home. I don't know if you remember any of that. Mm -hmm. I do. And they went around, and what they did was they basically the town acted as like a hub and did like the the, the bid work on um, any kind of uh, weatherization, uh, air sealing, any of these things, and then. Um, they had like a forum and then everybody could show up and they, they they basically educated everybody about here's you know you can do this with window dressers and you can hire the, here's the the a la carte options of what you can do to your house and they could schedule like a, a a visit and then the company that got selected it was one company and they would go to each different home mm -hmm. and they were able to do like weatherization of each of these homes and it was captured under one cost you know, the town would pay for it, but the town like did like a synergy type of thing. Yeah. Where they got a good they buy buying power. power. Like a buying power type yeah. Thing. Right. And uh and I was thinking like, you know, you could do something like that with the solar power. You know, you okay. could have like an event where you could like have, you know, the town I'm not saying I'm not I don't want to speak to the town, but I'm just saying let's say the the, the committee would have, you know, they would get whoever these people are that install the solar panels for homes, like you were talking about this place that you went and we could have like something like that where people could show up at a certain, it, it wouldn't be just for information. You could have food and whatever, refreshments and things like that. People could show up. It'd be like a social hour, kind of like the thing that I was talking, like you and two over at the yeah. parents. And, and they can talk about these different options and educate people on, um, you know, the, the, the feasibility of putting in solar panels and all of that, because I think a lot of people would be interested in that and it would be a well attended event. And then it would connect them with the people that they need to connect with to be able to do these things. And maybe it could go a step further and have like a buying power type of thing. Mm. Um, I'm not saying we have to do anything like that, but you know, if you don't do these kinds of things, it, it helps people because it gives them the first step of getting there and it right. really gives the ball. This is what the energy committee would have done by now, especially with climate change. Now is something you can mm -hmm. talk about. Mm -hmm. um, this climate group is working, Ramali is working with, Jer with um, Jeremy Martin. Mm -hmm. who has this grant which he got from the state partly with the promise the climate group would do outreach and this would fit right in if it could I mean I'm not saying the climate group should do it I'm saying somebody should do it mm -hmm. and, and Jeremy's grant should get credit for it as the town doing outreach mm -hmm. you see what I'm saying I'm trying to put the two groups sure. together with right. Jeremy's money because he needed the outreach in order to get the money. I'm not that quite sure where the out. money's going for. I think it's the public landing. It could be a you know, that could be a good outreach. You might case. want to find out. I was thinking I don't even know about the outreach. I just think that from a from a resident well, we want to do it anyway. Right, from a resident perspective. Well, yeah, yeah. People will want that. You know yeah. what I mean? Because what I remember about the energy, the envelope, the building envelopes and the weatherization program in, in Rockland was um, it was hugely successful and it really got people to do things that they probably, probably wouldn't have normally done because it's a lot of work to go find a contract yeah, right, yeah. and understand this is the right thing to do. You just don't know what, you don't right. know someone's buffaloing you. Or, yeah. So this is all that part's been done for you. Now so there's you, money for low income, more it, money. Right, exactly. There was, right. And everybody was embarrassed because it's only people who have money who afford it. Right. And now I think efficiency man is stepping up better. 
there's the efficiency. I mean, that was another thing. We had efficiency main involved, and then they someone was there to explain all of the grants and programs. Exactly. And the and rebates. That, and that's that's important because a lot of people don't know that. And mm -hmm. I, I think this falls into conservation. Oh, totally. Yeah. And absolutely. and I think that I'm not trying to push people to do more or or take on something we can't. But I don't think organizing an event like that would be that hard to do. No. And I think people would be really appreciate it. Yeah. Because yeah. because like you know a lot about this. Well, uh, I'd know. be happy to like present. Right, exactly. I've got four years of data and I can answer right. all the you know, you could have a vendor there and then you can say, Hey, and here's a guy that actually did it. You could talk to I could give a presentation on what right. was done, what the payback is, show the math, the numbers, the and I think that answer questions helps the community. You know what I mean? It really yeah. does. It takes out a lot it's of it's kind of scary. It, it is because we, you just don't know, you know, like I, I, I'm involved in this stuff all the time and I'm right. a little worried about doing something. Yeah, yeah. So if I'm feeling that way and I do all this stuff all the time, I can imagine somebody like some person that has no experience doing this. They don't know who to call. They don't know who to talk to. They don't know what the people talking to them are telling them the truth. Right. And, and this is like just a real informational yeah. thing and it's helpful. Even working with CMP, how's that all work? How yeah. And net meter. Yeah. I mean, it would be yeah. good to have like a place where everybody can go and learn a little bit about what, what I did it. Yeah. I said, so what's going to happen next? Well, you're going to get a bill from Blah blah blah. So yeah, I said, how's it all work? It's like I was I didn't know. And then it's so easy, but I, nobody explained it to me, right? Right. I actually told the vendor that installed my stuff, you guys would be well served if you explained that. Exactly. To take some of the fear out of it. Right. Why we don't you do that? Three or four topics. Yeah. And say that this is what your bill's gonna look like. Here's right. what you're gonna see on it. Just Here's an idea. idea. I'm not trying to prompt you guys yeah. into something that Lori or into something. I, I'm just thinking from my mm -hmm. perspective, it would be helpful to people in the community, and I think the community would appreciate it. But that would probably be an idea. Right with, with businesses here, it's a hotel, Dickie's Hotel at Solarock, he called me a number of years ago that I didn't do that much. Well, he had probably a huge bill for electricity, but he said it really worked for the hot water because he had his little swimming pool. Yeah. Like all that information is good information. And, and he's a business. Well, right. but it's also perception, yeah. you know, because what is the cost savings over time? Yeah. And that you could, what is actual, you know, anyways, there's a lot of ways you can kind of crunch that data with what, yeah. what he thinks he was saving versus what he actually saved, you know. Well, I got the math and you, but to yeah. the set every year <laughs> kilowatt hours kilowatt hours a day See, every... that's that's such valuable information for somebody that's thinking about doing this mm -hmm. because if you know it's like well, you're just not going to do it if, if it's not like a yeah. really easy way to figure it out right. you're just going to be like ah. Yeah. my husband yeah, no. did this for years but i can't access it i don't know how to get into it mm -hmm. but years and years of it just a thought i know you guys aren't like Searching for more things to do, but no, but this is going to be because this climate group, and maybe is there yeah. going to be an energy group? Is that going to be that was in some meeting notes? Some they talked about it actually at the last meeting, like we went to at the like the bear. I don't know what to call them, it's the resiliency or the well, coastal climate. <laughs> what's Barb? What's the name of that group? Limit the parents, yeah, that's the green. No, I don't know what it nothing is. Nothing Brian. Can you look it up? Yep. Mm. Well, they talked, the a lot of guys from the, a lot of people from the energy committee were there. And, and they, what meeting was this? It wasn't a meeting. It was this, it was, well, it was this. Um, it's, it's a get together. It's a get together. Oh, right. Yes. And then they have, like, they have a thing where everybody shares something at the beginning of the meeting. It's a climate conversation. Yeah. Or something. yeah. And they talked about how the energy committee was really like itching to kind of get back together again. And, um, some of the prior okay, members. I didn't there. even know about that. Yeah. It's a mid close climate, energy, and green building happy hour. Yes. yes. <laughs> Jess Scott is the. Uh, yeah, that's the yeah I sent to her. She said that to you guys from the cleaning. Mid coast climate, energy, and green building happy hour. If you say that after happy hour, you're doing pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody seems pretty happy that's there. So, <laughs> well, great idea. I, I couldn't. I couldn't get it because I don't do the kind of communication that, that group you, does. That I sent you. Yeah, but but the connection, they're using an app that I, I don't have a smartphone. Yeah, yeah. Or a text or something. Well, email. What? It was email. email. 
Get on the email list. I said well, everyone I the email. email and I was supposed to look at something and I couldn't open it. And that's my own contribution. The you guys kind of get together and where it is. Well, it is seeing that it's officially uh, 201, yeah. um, they want to give everyone's time. I would recommend we adjourn for this meeting. What time is the next meeting? The next meeting? Good question. I second the motion. Okay. Um, all in favor? Adjournment with the knowledge right. that October 25th, 12 to 2, is the next meeting here at the French Conference Room. Okay. I'll be back. All right. Thank you. Stay